Book 69 of 2019 was The Skeleton Cupboard by Tanya Byron. It was really weird listening to this book because I've met Tanya Byron. Um, she was the person who I had to shake hands with when I got my um, like graduation scroll thing um, for my PGCA. Is it my PGCA? Maybe it was my master's. One of them at Edge Hill anyway. Um, and at the time I didn't even know who she was, but I, like afterwards I kind of, well, I don't, did I afterwards I kind of look at who she was? I can't even remember. But I didn't realise that she was a trainee clinical psychologist. It's so weird because it's like I, that's what I was going to be originally. Um, well, not originally, but that was the career I was going for after university before I decided to become a teacher and um, go into education. But yeah, I didn't realise that that was her background. So it was quite interesting. Um, this book's basically um, Tanya Byron explaining what it was like as a trainee clinical psychologist. Um, and she does this by talking about the people that she meets and the people that she treats uh, during that time. What she does is in order to kind of um, keep patient confidentiality, which she obviously must do, um, she talks about characters in terms of like them being a composite. So obviously every kind of person that she's treated, she's kind of put together with other characters. Um, sorry, with other people to create like a character of what she's what she's portraying in the book. Now, I understand why she's done that, but I felt like that that made the way that she was talking about it quite inauthentic because it just seemed a little bit fictitious and a little bit unbelievable. Um, and, and this was before I'd even realised that they were composite characters. I felt this throughout and then when I kind of looked into it, I realised that that's what she'd done. Um, so it kind of, it wasn't as like, done as well as what other books were. Now, other books that I've read, so for example, The, the Examined Life, I um, can't remember his name, Stephen Goaz or something like that he's called. Um, that was amazing. That was really good when I read it. And it, he goes deeper and delves into like the psychological reasons behind, you know, uh, the, why people have the mental health issues that they have. And similarly, I've read another one. Um which I'll obviously do a review for because uh, I read it a couple of books after this one. Um, something like, so what was it called? Something like um, you need to speak to somebody or something like that. I'll listen to it on audio as well. But that one as well was like more in detail and, and more insightful uh, than what this one was. This one's really good if you're coming at it from a trainee's like um, clinical psychologist point of view or just from an interest of what clinical psychologists do as you know the you, there's something about like the secret life of a barrister or you know a teacher or whatever like there's lots of books like that now isn't there and doctors and stuff so this is just kind of another one of those but what this one's kind of focused on is that Tanya Byron's trying to explain that um as a trainee you're going to get things wrong there's going to be a lot you know you're trying to work it out yourself you're trying to become a, a clinical psychologist you're trying to be good at your job but it's really difficult because you've never done it before and you will make a lot of mistakes um, and she kind of presents it that making mistakes is a vital way of, of learning um, and that you've got to make mistakes in order to get good at something so she kind of comes at it from that angle so it's kind of like her journey through and how you know she she develops as a, as a psychologist um, it's also kind of presenting mental illness in a more humanised way and it removes a lot of the stigma um, that is around mental illness. Like a lot of people think, oh, it would never happen to me. But actually, the way she presents it, it's like it could happen to anybody. Literally, you know, would blindside you and you wouldn't even be aware of it. Um, and she talks about and discusses a range of different mental health issues in these composite characters. So you kind of get an insight into lots of different, you know, aspects of mental illness. Um, and... What she also touches on, I was just reading my little list there, what she also touches on is that we're all driven by our unconscious needs and desires and that when we interface with other people, they kind of um, show us our dysfunction, um, you know, from when you clash with people and things. Um, and also, the way she presents it is that every single person has a reason for their behaviour, everybody. Like, there's always reasons for why people are the way that they are and that... If you think about it logically, if you were to judge that person, that's not going to help them change. You're not going to make them a better person if you judge them. What's actually needed is compassion. And if you have compassion for a person, they're more likely to benefit from that and change into a more positive person than if you just write them off and judge them. So it was kind of more of a of an emphasis on 
everybody has reasons for why they are the way they are and that then you're not going to help them if you just judge them and, and isolate yourself from them and you know for your own comfort to like not interface with them um it's better to like put boundaries in place and kind of you know be compassionate with that person and help that person as best you can to help themselves um so that was kind of like um the premise of the book as well there was an emphasis on um not everybody has had the same privilege as what you might have had you know when you see people um who are homeless for example who are begging um and you think oh you know why can't you just you know go and get a job or whatever and you know if you think about it like if you were to ever find yourself in a situation where you lost your job and you uh, didn't have any money or whatever there'd be somebody in your life that you could probably rely on to kind of temporarily help you so like you could like move back in with your parents or a family member or um you know a sibling or a friend you know or you could like go to a few friends houses or whatever just temporarily where you got back on your feet whereas some people don't have that some people don't have anybody to rely on like they are their own you know person and if you are only relying on yourself as well you have no you know social network you have nobody to kind of make you feel better like you don't have anything and you know if you don't have a job there's no income like and people who are in that situation might be you know when they've been brought up they've not been brought up particularly you know in a in a loving childhood environment where they haven't had the values instilled into them in terms of you know how to survive in a in a better than survive how to live um you know perhaps they've they've dropped out of education and um because they've not kind of had somebody looking after them to see like are they actually in education or to help them with the homework you know there's loads of different things systemically that can prevent people from achieving in life and often it's not just on an individual it's on a, it's on a lot of a range of factors and i think that's something that we kind of need to bear in mind when we're judging other people's behavior um not everyone's had the same privilege as what you've had not everyone has been as lucky as what you have and even if you don't view yourself as lucky there's obviously other people out there that are less lucky than what you've been so it's kind of just to be mindful of that i think most people that haven't been lucky or have had struggles are actually quite mindful of it i think it's the people that perhaps had quite a an okay life that don't really think about it and kind of judge it in a way of you know it's their own fault it's, it's a bit more complex than that um that isn't gone i've just gone off on a tangent there that isn't kind of going into a lot in this book this book's more about mental illness and and the kind of outward uh manifestations of mental illness are not often nice like an, an example would be you know anxious people are often interpreted as being quite rude and hostile and quite um like standoffish but they're standoffish because they're so bloody anxious <laughs> like there's a reason why they're behaving like that like you've just got to look beneath the surface with people a lot of the time like all of the time like you've got to, there's more to people than what's just what's just right there and you can't just write people off and judge people because of the way they're behaving like often they need you know if if people are behaving in a way where they are they are rejected by others because of this judgment you're going to make them worse like you're going to make that behavior worse it's going to exasperate exasperate it's going to be worse than if you were actually nice and compassionate to that person so uh yeah it was an interesting book it's good insight into mental illness it's a good insight into a training psychologist uh, so if you are thinking of becoming a, a clinical psychologist or just a psychologist in general and dealing with people it's very insightful for that reason um but i just didn't like the fact that it was composite characters so that just put me off a little bit and it is narrated by tanya Byron as well or someone that sounds very like her if it isn't her i can't quite remember now to think about it um so i think it might be something that just sounds like her but so it felt authentic for that reason as well so yeah i'd recommend it um but it's not like amazing mind-blowing gonna tell you all about psychological functioning which is what i was kind of mainly going for so that's why i was a little bit put off by it